All right, another week, another Football Tailgaters podcast episode where we go over hot topics in the NFL. Let me introduce ourselves, starting with our Jets fan, Yams, Andy, the unbiased fan in the group, and myself, Aaron. I'm a Cowboys fan. Let's unpack week 10 of the NFL and go over our topics for today. We're always going to start with our weekly biggest disappointment, weekly biggest uh, surprise. We're going to talk about some head coaching positions that are in question, including one in college. We're also going to have some extra topics to go over and see who are the top dogs in the NFC and AFC. And we're always going to cap off with our fantasy updates and our week 11 picks. So let's start with this week's week 10 biggest disappointment, guys. What is that one for you guys? I think this is going to be obvious for both of you. For me, it's the Jets. I'm just tired of seeing the same old Jets. I see the optimism in the Jets and versus the Chiefs in that game, and and they and then I see them go back into a pumpkin. You know, it's midnight. They have they have to go back. It's it's they need to catch up and go back to the old their old old ugly life. I'm just sick of it. Jets are not allowed to have nice things. For me, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence and company. They were all, all getting excited for this upcoming game against the 49ers. They said, we've been we've been playing really well. This is the chance to put it all together against a really good team. And look at the dead that they threw out there. They were almost scoreless against the 49ers. Looks like we all have a different one this week. I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens. After being considered Super Bowl contenders, they put up a dud. They choke against the Browns in a close game. Fair to say they won by, you know, just a couple points, two points. Lamar Jackson, you got to step it up, man. A touchdown, two interceptions. That's not going to cut it. They struggle with the running game, and the Browns just had their way at the end of the day, and they need to work on that. It's a close division in the AFC North, so something to keep an eye on. What about your guys' Week 10 biggest surprise? I'm going to say I'm a little jealous of the quarterback, C.J. Stroud. He has no weapons. He elevates everyone on that team, such as Tank Tell, Noah Brown, who was in the Cowboys. These are no names, and they are now becoming known because they have their quarterback. Yeah, I'm with you. To Texans, they were the biggest surprise for me. They beat Cincinnati, even though if the if the receiver of the Cincinnati Bengals actual boy actually caught that ball, they would have won that game, the Cincinnati Bengals, but they still are showing really big time uh, fighting in their in in the Texans a team. And CJ Stroud is just blowing teams out of the water. I'll go with the same thing, but I wouldn't fully consider, you know, Noah Brown being a no name. He was pretty significant with the Cowboys. It's just he didn't have a big role there. And it's great to see him finally get some opportunities with a very banged up Texans team. If you look, uh, I don't know, I didn't send it to you guys, but it, it was kind of in the news right before the Bengals game. An absurd amount of injuries were reported an absurd amount and to go out there and be a what people consider a Super Bowl contender possibly definitely a playoff contender to go out there and have like around 15 players banged up on your roster and win it's it's the craziest thing that we've seen so far and of course we've seen it everywhere we've seen it obviously in in plenty of topics plenty of conversations analysts going over CJ Stroud being possibly in the MVP candidate, not just Rookie of the Year, but in the MVP candidate. It's not an overreaction, I think, at this point. You could have said that maybe last week, but now it's definitely in the conversation. What this guy's been able to do with this rebuilding team. This is a team that came into this season as a rebuilding team. Nobody took them serious. Nobody took them serious. Even with CJ Stroud, yeah, number two pick, right? They also got Will Anderson right after it's a huge thing that they're doing and again like they did it without their main kicker they had to get a new kicker right they're arguably number one wide receiver nico collins they got tank dell in the draft right he's been amazing they have no running game that's the problem they need to work on the running game but singletary did his job so that's great to see it's just we just need to see more of that running game and i think as soon as that defense you know, they, they get their players back from those injuries too. It'll be even better. So I'm excited to see what they have. Let's go into the main topics. 
So there's plenty of question marks, obviously. We're more than halfway through with the season. We're going to start with two NFL coaches here. And I'm going to go down the list, but we'll go one by one and see if these head coaches deserve to keep their head coaching position, obviously. We'll start with some person, you know, uh, some will consider a big name, Bill Belichick, right? He has a big history. Now it's currently looking very not good. <laughs> for Bill Belichick and with the whole Mac Jones situation and whatnot, whatever you can say about the Patriots currently, what do you think about Bill Belichick? Should he be fired from the New England Patriots? You know what? I think it's time to move on. I was very forgiving because of his tenure with the team, but that last substitution at the end, it was a two minute warning. And Mac Jones just threw a pick. Obviously, it was a horrible throw, but it was just weird. It was of the wrong time to do substitution for Zap, Zappy Bailey, whatever his name is. It was just, for me, it's an emotional reaction and wasn't very an educated reaction. And I'm sure he just pulled him out because he was livid. I wouldn't think that it's time to fire Bill Belichick. Even the best head coaches need a quarterback. Every time a head coach is going to be taking a position, they always ask who's going to be their quarterback. Now, in this case, Bill Belichick is one of the greats of all time, and they just don't have a quarterback just like many head coaches do, and they fall into that realm that they're just not getting better. So I say draft another quarterback, draft well in this in, in this next draft for a quarterback and give him another shot. He's done so much for this team for them just to let him go. I think it's pretty fair, and it's not in the position to where you need to fire him just yet. You need to give him a quarterback, first of all, because he doesn't have a quarterback. And especially the Patriots, they're not really known to get their big stars. Where's the wide receivers, right? Even the running back sometimes, Stevenson, he can come through. but they, he's not a star, right? You can't consider him a superstar. And really the highlight of Bill Belichick and the Patriots can be on the defensive side. As soon as Tom Brady left, you know, completely different conversation. So you need to give this guy a competent quarterback under center to really fix things. They're sitting at 2-8. and eight. They, they can get a pretty solid opportunity to maybe do some trades or even get a quarterback in the draft one or the other but they need to make some moves and I think if they're not making any moves if they don't make any significant moves and if they don't draft a quarterback uh I say in like I don't know in the first two rounds whatever because it depends on how they end up this season and I can see them losing more games right it's going to be tough for them to even win more especially with the kind of division that they're sitting in so I don't know it's not fair to say he should be gone yet but I I wouldn't say you're crazy for considering to fire him because you know sometimes you just need a fresh start it seems like they need they need a fresh start there's a lot of poor decisions like i said the mac jones substitution and then you put in a cold quarterback that hasn't that's been just playing. The, okay but that's oh, just a quarterback situation wait though. up wait up but then you have bill o'brien like yelling at mac jones like oh, he's a child it's just fine whatever and then you have bailey zappy throwing an interception on a fake spike that, that you're all saying about the quarterback that's all that you're no. that all the mistakes are coming down to the quarterback situations all the other players are playing well they're all like being coached up well the defense is playing is playing good enough in my opinion it's just the quarterback situation. You put. Can a- I can I ask you something? What about what? What if they ended up signing DeAndre Hopkins? Do you think they would be two and eight? I don't think so. They'll be three and eight. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't. think Would there so. be any any significant improvement? No. Okay. No, and I'll I'll tell you why. DeAndre Hopkins. If we put him next to the me- the best elite wide receiver out there, those wi- those elite wide receivers are not the ones throwing the ball, right? We put Devontae mm-hmm. Adams. He, I mean, he played well yesterday, uh, but he's ha- he had Derek Carr, he had uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, and he was non-existent. Give me another wide receiver uh, that is elite. Uh, who else? Who else would be like top notch? Chase is having his struggles. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm just saying that wide receivers do not do not completely they do help the the quarterback but they're not going to completely change the whole scheme and deandre hopkins even if he's good is not going to change anything even look at him right now with with may it it seems like he he did really well the first week but then the next two weeks 
he's not he's non existent. And and also you gotta look at all their injuries. Matthew Judon injured reserve. That's defense. Christian Gonzalez injured reserve. Defense. I know. I'm saying in general. Mm-hmm. I'm saying why this team is two and eight. And why I'm giving the reason why he shouldn't be fired just yet. Mm-hmm. They've been dealing with a lot of stuff. And sometimes not even the best coaches can even deal with that, right? It's rare cases. And especially Bill Belichick has been there for years, right? So who knows what else is going on? But you yeah, there there's they gotta look at something here to to really fix that offense really because the defense not it's not really the issue here it's the offense how many capable quarterbacks are out there in the nfl maybe like 12 15 maybe if you Mm -hmm. put a capable quarterback with the patriots i'm sure they'll be up there and beating miami and just winning those those close games in the division i'm i'm pretty sure about that so you don't mess with that and i know we're gonna I mean, there are some things I want to talk about the next coach, so I don't know if you want to move on to the next one. <laughs> no, yeah, we can definitely move on. So the next coach we're going to talk about, and Yams was highly offended about this one on the list, should Robert Salah be fired from the Jets? Yeah, I don't even know why he's on this list. No, <laughs> it's not fair. And he, you know, he was probably not in the middle of the decision making to draft Zach Wilson, but that doesn't matter anyways because all the quarterbacks suck anyways from that draft class besides T Law, but then he's also like his ceiling has been met in my opinion. It's the GM and the owner who whoever's in charge there who should be kind of in the hot seat. I know the owner will never be on the hot seat, but they're a little bit of cis- sissies right now for only signing Aaron Rodgers friends. After that Raiders game, uh, the Jets nation is just calling out for Robert Salah's head. A lot no, of them, not. a lot of them are. No, but I've been seeing it in the media. I'm sorry, but that's what's ha- what's going on. He, they're saying that he should be on the hot seat. In my opinion, it shouldn't be. They did, like you said, they did put the whole plan out for Aaron Rodgers to be like the face and the quarterback and to save the whole the whole team. And they brought all of his friends, all of his family members, everything in there to help him out. So yeah, I disagree for Robert Salah to get fired. He has a, an elite defense that if you put a, another one, another a situation, another example, if you put a capable quarterback, they would be up there as a really elite team, in my opinion. Sorry, one, one thing before Aaron. Yes, the only thing I think that falls on him is the penalties. That does fall on the head coach. But Everything's- Another thing, that's so weird that there's so many penalties called on on the Jets. Every game that I'm seeing is like penalty after penalty after penalty. And it's like also weird penalties that you're like, really? Like I've seen worst calls uh, uh, like called on other, on other teams. It's, it's just strange to me that that's happening a lot to the Jets. I... I just think it's very bizarre. I saw the Raiders do some uh, some some questionable plays there, and they weren't called. So it's just really, really strange for me that the Jets are getting so many calls. Yeah, they had uh, eight penalties for 83 yards. So that definitely kills you in a game like this, especially when you're just kicking field goals the whole time. It's it's trouble, and I don't think what Robert Salah has been through has been necessarily fair to him, right? Obviously, he's not in control of everything, like Amp said. It's more so I would blame a little bit more towards the specifically the fact that the offensive coordinator is <laughs> hack it, right? Awful, just awful because management wanted to go out of their way with Aaron Rodgers and give him exactly what he wants. Now, whenever you do that, you put yourself in a very, very niche situation to where if a piece goes down, everything is going to struggle to keep up. And that is what we're seeing right now. And that's a huge problem. And it's biting them. It's killing them. And it's ruining their chances to go to the playoffs. Now they're sitting at four and five, right? That's definitely not good in this kind of division with the Dolphins and the Bills. You need to be competitive. The time's running out. Robert Salah can only do so much, right? You also need to discipline, right? You can blame a little bit in the fact that the penalties are a bad case in this situation, right? But that's not the whole story. You got to look at the whole story. And the whole story is that the management, they messed up. They messed up. And now they're, they're paying their paying their consequences they're dealing with the consequences that they did in the off season all these actions i would say that there's some faults and and robert's a lot i mean there is like a big percentage of, of 
yeah, he of, has, of errors there because he is the head coach. He has control and of play call. He, he can... ha- yeah, exactly. If you're seeing week mm-hmm. by week that that Zach Wilson is not in the best position, unfortunately, you're in a position that you have to really cater to the quarterback in this team. Like you really have to be very careful with him and the plays that you that you call. Some use his legs, trying to figure things out because we're seeing the same thing over and over again. At the end of the Raiders game, we finally are able to like see him do some crazy athletic athletic plays um and and the final play which was a, a like a i don't know like a, a lot of a lot of quarterbacks probably would have gone down but he actually moved really quickly when crosby was uh was going after him and he threw up a, a big time throw into the end zone like like jumping hmm. and then there was another play that he also um like got the the chains moving also moving and then just jumping around and throwing the ball like i do see the talent it's just the the boneheaded decisions that the kid does when it's like simple plays and simple reads that a quarterback should be able to do but okay, that's I'm the so that's sorry, the, that's but... the robert but that's robert so lost fault as ah. well because he needs to put uh, the offensive coordinator hack it in his place to change things up. Uh, okay, well, and this might you can't be do un- anything when you have no offensive line, so that's a problem. Well, you, uh, no, you can, you you can. There's ways of doing things. I mean, we've seen teams that don't have an offensive line be successful. You have to be a little right, bit. But it's quicker. easy to say that. It's easy to say that, but it's hard to do, right? Of course, well, especially when of you course. have someone like Salah, who's not offensive minded at all, and someone who's boneheaded. Like Nathaniel Hackett, but you, uh, us three, we're we're not like football players or coaches, right? And we no, can no, see agreed, that yeah. that we that there should be things to be changed. Robert Salah has been around football for a long time. All these coordinators have been around football for a long time. It's it's it should be easier. Yeah, I know you said it's easier said than done, but it should be easier to fix things. These things we've been saying it constantly week after week that zach wilson should be using his legs he finally used it yesterday they were actually he doing better use him. no That's last week thing. he didn't last week was a was a flop which is the you and i bet well, we you can't and go, I bet that we can't game. go week by week we can't go week by week just but, saying well how come in this one and how come in this we, one and how we come did this one? we looked at the week by week and we said yeah this is a good bet because he makes at least 20 yards well that's my pro that's my situation that's what i'm talking about why is it not consistent well, that is on robert Salah's shoulders yeah, and to some degree, and and like, uh, how how is it going down in in those meetings? Whenever they're talking about specifically on the offensive side, right? right. How much control does he have? Uh, how much, uh, I guess, like how much Nathaniel Hackett, you know, rejects his ideas and doesn't let him do things. Uh, there's so much we don't know and what's going on, and we clearly see that there's a problem there, but we don't know exactly. How, what's the issue in like is robert salah being commanding enough is he putting his foot down enough right well let me just say that it was a great plan for the jets this year to have aaron Rodgers and his weapons here and his coach because aaron Rodgers is a is a freak of nature as a talent wise and robert salah was just going to be taking care of that elite defense which he has it is an elite defense but it was a great plan but unfortunately, it's not. It just didn't work out because your biggest plan just fell down and broke. And also, po- unpopular opinion: I don't think Zach Wilson played bad yesterday. But you know, that's just me. Okay. I, 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 yes, he did. No, he did not. There was three quarters. There was three quarters. Yams in it. There's, no, he played well in the last quarter. No, you can't do that as a quarterback. No, he did not. He played well all three quarters. It was only that one play where. Why he were got they going three and out? Three and out. Three but, and but out. Did three you and see? Out, three all, did you see when they got a positive play? They got it. Got flagged. Did you see? Did you see that one throw to Alan Lazard? He almost dropped it. He was juggling. Okay, I'm gonna say this about Zach Wilson, and it's just really frustrating. We're all putting Zach Wilson like in a pedestal no. to try to yes to we we put him into a separate category saying you he he didn't play that bad compared to last week or the other weeks but if you put him as against other capable quarterbacks well I mean yeah other quarterbacks do get intercepted Joe Burrow gets intercepted but they figure out a way to win uh, uh, Jared Goff gets intercepted but he figures out a way to win and it's the same situation you don't go three and out three and out three and out and then at the end of the very, game try, very, w- w- try to you, win the game very very very, very good example very very good example is I'll bring this up because we just went over this a great example right CJ Shroud he's a rookie right he he made a awful awful interception and what did he do he had time to bring it back and go march all the way down to win the game 
why why what's going on in the offense with the Jets that they can't figure something out with Zach Wilson and play around him use his legs properly use the running game you have Brees Hall what is going on you signed Dalvin Cook you have Garrett Wilson you have Alan Lazard yeah, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. On what the happened run game. with the Chargers? Six points. I'll give you that. It's frustrating. It's frustrating, and it shouldn't be happening. So there's something that really there needs to be accountability. What is the management are, like? Are they hounding Salah? Are they pressuring him? Is Salah overthinking it? Is Nathaniel Hackett having too much control of the offense? We don't know those details, and that's a problem. All we're seeing is issues going on on the offensive side, and all eyes are on Zach Wilson and Robert Salah right now. That's a problem, and it needs to change. They got the Bills next and the Dolphins. It's not going to get easier. They lose these next two games. They're out of the playoffs, I think. It's over for this season, unfortunately. They, they, if they somehow bring it back, I don't know what they're going to do, but they got to figure something out soon because this is a problem, and especially when they have... It's an away game against the Bills. That's always tough, right? Even though you're kind of down the street, basically. But it's the Bills. The Bills are ahead of you guys by one game in a very close division with Miami leading 6-3. Time's running out, let's be honest. And and it's not going to get any easier. And Aaron Rodgers can only heal fast enough, right? So hopefully they find a way to fix it with the running game and and Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson has the talent, right? But clearly there's some lack of chemistry, lack of, I guess, offensive efficiency, I should say. And they got to figure it out or else they're out of the playoffs. And I think that's the end of (laughs) my point. I don't know if you guys have anything else to say before we move on to Jim Harbaugh and his head coaching situation. Cold Jets. (laughs) We can probably mention that at the very end whenever Andy goes over his uh, week 11 picks. Let's go over Jim Harbaugh, Andy. What do you have about that? Yeah, Jim Harbaugh has been in the news so far, biggest college news. And it seems that he is sort of being let go, unquote, unquote, not let go. He's been suspended, and it's because he is... So uh, looking at other teams like signals to get an advantage of them. and. It seems like that is the situation with him in which he in which he suspended. He cannot be on the sidelines on game day, but he can coach the teams uh, throughout the week. So now it seems that Michigan is really angry at the SEC because basically the case is not completely finished, but they are suspending him. So it seems like the that Jim Harbaugh might be out of college football and he might come back to the NFL, but. I guess I wanted to hear your guys' opinions. It's basically, it's a, how do you say it? A, um, you're found guilty. Uh, how do you, how do you say it? There's a saying. You're, 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 you're innocent. Pro- until innocent until proven, proven guilty. guilty. Exactly. So innocent so until proven standing. guilty with Jim Harbaugh. Uh, he's suspended and for the neck for the rest of the college uh, games. Well, definitely until they find out. So right. uh, is he studying hand gestures? Is that what he's? Yes. Yeah. Is that is that bad? I thought you could do that. A lot of a lot of teams come forward and say, yeah, it's really normal. You just try. I to, thought that yeah. was normal. Yeah. Well, okay. But they they got caught. But basically. It, well, I mean that doesn't make it okay if it's against the rules. It's against the rules. Mm-hmm. So it's against the rules. <laughs> it's against the rules. Yeah, it's against yeah. the rules. But it, and, they and, all do it. It's like when t- when players yeah. flop, but you don't know when they flop. Like it's against the rules. So. Uh, I mean, you. Everybody does it basically. So if they're doing hand gestures for, for everyone to see, mm-hmm. how how are they supposed to be discreet about that? You no, know, you see them also do like um, they throw up those uh, big signs with like pictures on them, and you know, and all those symbols. With Cam Newton, there was like yeah, like giving numbers to him, like one, two, right. three, or mm-hmm. whatever. What's wrong with that? You're you're taking your opponent, you're going home, and you're you're studying. That's why a lot of people are for Jim Harbaugh and just being mad at the SEC for yeah, for this I don't. To I, do, I agree. I don't think that's wrong. You go home, you take what you can get, you study. Okay, they're doing this jet hand gesture. Okay, if you're dumb enough to do these hand gestures and to reuse them, then you're dumb. I don't know. That's my opinion. <laughs> I just say, I mean, it is what it is. If if it's against the rules, you gotta as as an organization, you gotta figure out. Okay, if a lot of people are saying, hey, you know, a lot more teams. There's more teams doing the whole science stealing thing. That's that's a problem. And how come 
Michigan is the only one that gets caught and gets punished, right? If there's more teams doing it, then it should be fair all across. Otherwise, then you need to rethink that rule or change it up or add some something to it besides that. But just punishing Michigan for them being caught when other teams do it, you know, it's it's a little bit unfair. And especially when they're saying supposedly that, you know, there's no direct evidence just yet from my knowledge, right? From my knowledge, I might be wrong, but it's if there's evidence to it, then there there should be punishment. If there is no evidence, there should be no punishment. But what it's it's only because this one blew up and now, you know, the organization has to act upon it or else they don't want to look bad. It's a problem. I think uh, I think it's interesting, though. So should he be fired? Um, no, I don't think it would be fair necessarily. I think he should uh, at least be... Because um, let me say that Michigan actually had a contract to extend them, and then they said, yeah. you know what, never mind, and they, they withdrew the it. They pulled the contract. Yeah. I mean, better for him. I'd rather have him in the NFL than... Well, college. better for us as NFL fans, yeah. But I don't know for him personally if it's fair or not, which I don't think so. I mean, he definitely probably doesn't think so. He does know. get a lot of criticism know. because he doesn't win the big games. Uh, against like Ohio or uh, you know those big big college teams, and I guess there people are saying that they're that he was really really desperate and he really wanted to really get a hold of all the teams he was gonna face things like uh, of like plans against them so they can be ahead of the game. I mean that's just war in my opinion. You try to figure it out, no? So I don't think it's a big deal. But. I hear Jay Cockle Bears might have an opening. There's a lot of teams that are going to have them. It's closer. It's closer to him. Michigan. His family doesn't have to move. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the extra stuff that we have here. We got some talk about the NFC and AFC and who are the top dogs. So let's go over to the NFC first and talk about the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions. So what do you guys think about them? Are they the top team in the NFC? So don't come at me. Uh, However, they do look unstoppable. They look pretty good. But in my opinion, they haven't really played a really good team. Besides the Chiefs, and that was the first game of the season, so I don't know if that counts. It's a rusty game, brand new, coming into it. I want to say no, they're not. I agree with you. They haven't played top-notch teams. They just finished uh, playing Chargers, which is a good team. Uh, but we know that, they're, that they have struggles. Other than that, their division is horrible. They have Green Bay. They have the Bears. Uh, the Vikings... They've, I mean, they're 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 a little bit better than average, but they haven't been playing really really good teams. And also, they beat the Panthers, I believe. So until I guess the next really hard team for them is the Cowboys, then we can see if it's they're the top NFC team. But I still have the Eagles on top. Yeah, they're it's it's not to discredit them necessarily because you can say that they just face garbage teams, but we've seen really good teams face garbage teams and lose. So there's some kind of you know discrepancy there and they did face the chiefs week one they won by a single point but it's still a win and they lost they got stomped out absolutely demolished by the ravens right who are you know playoff contenders for sure that's a competitive team so you can argue that yeah maybe there's some flaws with the lines there but yeah there's there's no real strong competition necessarily we can say that division opponents like the bears packers vikings they could fall as you know competitive play there but aside from that, they do have the Cowboys, who I think is probably the hardest team that they're going to face in the rest of their schedule because they got the Saints, Broncos, and their division uh, teams, uh, rivals, right, with uh, Green Bay and, and the Vikings. Now, I wouldn't say they're a fluke all the way, but I also wouldn't put them at the top of the NFC, right? There's, it's, I think it's a lot closer in the NFC than maybe the AFC. But we'll talk about that in a bit. I wouldn't put that uh, the lines at the top just yet. But they're kind of close. They're definitely top five team for sure. Let's go over to the AFC side. We're going to talk specifically the Houston Texans. So the Houston Texans won big. Obviously, we talked about it earlier against Cincinnati. That was huge. CJ Stroud is looking phenomenal, right? Clearly all over media right now. The big talk is, is he the MVP? Is he leading the MVP conversation right now in the, in the race for the MVP? Clearly they've taken over the offensive rookie of the year and possibly even the coach of the year with D'Amico Ryans. Houston Texans have been, I, I, I don't even know what to say because like they were just rebuilding, right? And, and they got a whole thing going on 
with their culture there, and they've completely turned it around with D'Amico Ryans and their rookies. So are the Houston Texans a top three AFC team? I, so I am a little a jealous. You know, C.J. Stroud has been sh- showing that he is the franchise quarterback for that team, and, and it looks like they found their quarterback. and They are proving to have something special, but it is still wide open for me in the AFC. I don't see anyone with high dominance yet, and I don't know. I, it's too early for me to say top three because it's it's still wide open. They are a good team, though, and they're proving me wrong they're not there yet but they are knocking at the door i have the chiefs i have the cincinnati Bengals, and i also have the ravens uh up there so but they are getting close to it the afc there's a lot of teams that we thought they were really good and they're having their troubles aka miami dolphins and the buffalo bills so if they go to the houston so if they go to the playoffs they can be a team that to be reckoned with so not yet but they could be i think they do have a great chance to take over afc south AFC, I was talking about, I think it's a little bit more competitive. You got the Dolphins again, Bills, right? Ravens are still in it, even though they lost a tough game against the Browns. And the Chiefs, right? Those are all great teams. And they're competitors. And we, again, it's the Houston Texans that were considered rebuilding, right? So I I wouldn't just buy into the hype yet that they're top three AFC team, right? Because they do have some flaws. They are sitting five and four. They've got some stuff to work on on the offense, some kinks to work out. Not the passing game, the running game. They need to figure that out. When they get Damian Pierce back, what's going on with him? Is he going to be the main guy going through? We'll have to see. He's got some some games left to prove, right, still. Some stuff to work out. The offensive line is not perfect, but it's 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 not the worst. It's not the worst. And over on the defensive side... Uh, I mean, Will Anderson hasn't been like a complete stud, right? But he's been pretty good. And definitely their secondary is solid. So if you put that team all together and, and you know, against, I don't know, the Ravens or the Dolphins, I think they lose those games possibly. Is it a complete blowout? No. But I think they keep it semi-competitive. And that's great news for a rebuilding team, right? You're headed in the right direction. You got a competent coach who's leaning them in the right direction with great culture and great players. They've got some stuff left to prove, but I'm not, I'm not completely out on them just yet. I'm possibly ending up in the playoffs, but definitely not at three, top three AFC team for sure. It's a lot of fun though. I've been watching their games and you know, it's something else. And the AFC is, I think, a lot more exciting right now than the NFC, mainly because you got struggling divisions over at the nfc i mean you you could say possibly even the afc right but you got competitive ones like the afc north right and then you got the big competitors in the bills dolphins and then obviously the chiefs the Bengals are something to keep an eye on to see right now they're sitting last after that loss against the texans so something to watch there but let's move on over to the ending right now and talk some fantasy updates with you know i think we got what is it like three four more weeks left for fantasy yeah for the playoff start close, right yeah. already yeah it's get, yeah Damn it's it, getting there so <laughs> if you're sitting somewhere around 500 yeah you kind of you kind of need to i don't know pray harder or something it's 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 worrying but andy just let us know about some fantasy updates here for this upcoming week for week 11 yeah, fantasy updates for week 11. I have the team that we've been talking about, the Houston Texans, starting off with Ty Chandler, the running back. Actually, I'm so sorry. Let me start again. <laughs> <laughs> let's start off. Yeah, let's start with the Houston Texans fantasy week 11. We'll start off with Devin Singletary, the running back for the Texans. He is rostered in 50.8% of the league. Uh, the starter, Pierce, he has an ankle injury, and he's week by week, but it seems like... He, that injury is prolonging even longer than it should. Devin Singletary put in some big numbers last week, so I would pick him up if you need a running back. Next up, we go with the wide receiver Noah Brown of the Houston Texans. He's ro- ro- rostered in 24% of leagues. Last week, he had seven catches for 172 yards. So he's been getting those points week by week, so I would pick him up if you need a wide receiver. Lastly, I have Ty Chandler, the running back for the Minnesota Vikings. He is rostered in seven percent of leagues madison the main running back was concussed he and 
Ty Chandler came in, rushed 15 times for 45 yards and scored a touchdown. So he might be the lead back coming into next week. So I would pick him up if you need a, run, a running back. Is that it? That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. that's, why, that's why I said last I, week. I, <laughs> it's because it's yeah. really hard, uh, especially. And we're coming to the yeah, end. Yeah, we're too. coming to the yeah. end. So no one available. you really, really have to see how who's who's getting a better chemistry with their quarterbacks like Noah Brown and any starting wide receivers or running backs are going down. Hence, yeah. Devin Singletary and Tyne Chandler. Make sure you get those those players. What about Who Brandon Cooks? I sp- uh, actually, I brought up Brandon Cook- Cooks last week, if I'm not mistaken, and he did really, really, really well yeah. for for fantasy owners so if you pick them up yeah now the you. whole question is can he can he keep it up right can the cowboys realize oh wow look what he did this past week can we do it again right against a competitive team uh, that's not the giants yeah. I, I, so. I wish I can tell you yes or no, but you know, next yeah. week they have the Panthers, and that should be another easy game for them. So yeah, yeah Brandon yeah. Cook should also do really well in that game. Yeah, yeah, and then the Commanders, Seahawks, Eagles. Yeah, after the, uh, yeah, after I the Panthers, they keep it up. I, yeah, after the Panthers, I can't tell you yes or no because I think Washington's going to be a hard keep team. Seattle's going to be a hard team. Well, not extremely hard, but harder. And then you have Miami, Buffalo, and they should put put them more into the. And into the scheme, into the game yeah, plan. Into the game like, plan. It's I'm seeing another, especially when you have inconsistencies with Gallup. I believe there was another wide receiver new that I saw, Brooks. I don't know what's yeah. what's going on with him. Uh, and then they involve Turpin. It seems like they're trying to involve pl- players. I mean, they sometimes Ferguson, sometimes Scott Meyer, Schuttenmeyer. and they got Martavius Bryant, Bryant because yeah. you know the whole because uh, Turpin's injured. Um, even though he played, if I'm not mistaken, no, he played last. Even though he played, yeah, but he's he's. I'm sure he's still kind of banged up there. But they were giving other wide receivers more opportunities because I think of what what was happening with Turpin being a little bit banged up. But yeah, yeah. and also it was a blowout, so they put in their bench. Uh, what was it like at the end of the third quarter, beginning fourth? So it's it's some opportunities, and I think it was a great time for them to see what they're able to do now here that. They're going into basically the last couple of games. They need to finish strong in this second half, so hopefully they do. What about Week 11 picks? So we got a lot of that going on. Uh, We got four teams, obviously, on bye week. Falcons, Colts, Patriots, and Saints. So what do you got for us on Week 11? Week 11 picks. We'll start off with Thursday night football. The Cincinnati Bengals against the Baltimore Ravens. Both these teams had heartbreaking losses this last Sunday. For this week, I am going to take the Bengals. I am not trusting the Ravens offense too much. I know that Lamar Jackson has been playing really well, but I'm not liking what I've been seeing recently. They seem like very one-dimensional, that they have like like two or three types of, of, of plays. Not, they're not very creative. So the Bengals, I am going to take them for the win. The Pittsburgh Steelers against the Cleveland Browns. Now, Pittsburgh Steelers, they're horrible on offense, but I do love their defense. Uh, Tomlin, he always has this team just playing really, really hard. I believe they're first in their division, if I'm not mistaken, or getting close to there. Um, And it seems that the Browns, they have a really good defense. uh, And Watson, he is like up and down throughout the whole game. So since the Browns have an elite defense and Watson is up and down, but they have a better offense than the Steelers, I am going to take the Browns. The Chicago Bears against the Detroit Lions this is a divisional game. I believe Justin Fields will be back for this one, but I'm going to take the Lions. The Lions are just creeping up in the NFC, getting closer and closer to be that top NFC team. Uh, so I am going to be taking the Lions. The Seattle Seahawks against the Los Angeles Rams. That's another divisional game. Uh, the Rams, Matthew Stafford, it was announced today that he is going to be playing for this particular game. He has C- Cooper Cup. He has uh, Puka. Now, hopefully I said his name correctly, but I believe, <laughs> but I believe the Seattle Seahawks, they have a, a legitimate defense that are going to give some trouble to the offense of the Rams. And even though Geno Smith has not been playing as great as he did last year, they are going to be finishing it up with a close win. So I'll pick the Seahawks. Sunday night football, the Minnesota Vikings against the Denver Broncos. Dobbs, I mean, he's becoming a favorite for a lot of for a lot of people. He's been moving from team to team, and he is actually lighting the Vikings on fire. So uh, the Denver Broncos, uh, they are getting up. They're getting better and better each week. I'm not too sure with tonight's game with Monday night football. We'll see. 
But for this one, I am going to be taking the Broncos because I do believe that Sean Payton and Russell Wilson, they're getting it together little by little. They do have a defense, and I'm just going to... Sh- I'm just going to be picking them because I think they're going to be better, making a better place for, for this particular Sunday night game. football. Yep. Lastly, Monday night football, the Philadelphia Eagles <laughs> against the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a Super Bowl rematch. This is going to be a great game, probably the best game of the week, in my opinion. The Chiefs are coming back, um, and the Eagles are coming back from a bye week. They're both going to be really, really prepared for this game. It's just... The Chiefs are just a little bit better, in my opinion, just like they were in the Super Bowl. And even though they don't have that great of an offense, they are going to be able to figure it out because I did see them, uh, the Eagles struggle against the Cowboys. So I'm going to be taking the Chiefs. Super Bowl rematch, too. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for no, that And game. it's crazy that they both had a bye week. Like, that's insane. Yeah, and they both... Yep. And this is an important game, too, because the the Eagles, you know, they got the Cowboys right behind them, obviously. They got the Detroit Lions. This is a fight for number one seed. So at this point, we're at a we're at a point in the season where every game is starting to count right for these top teams and what seed they're going to get. So mm-hmm. super important game for the Chiefs and Eagles. And they got to show out Patrick Mahomes. He's got to show out as long as as long as Travis Kelsey's there. I, I think they're pretty competitive. Right, even though he has no wide receivers. Taylor Swift is say. busy, so I don't know if that <laughs> winning streak is going to keep going. We'll see what it is. It's in Kansas City, so they got home field advantage. Almost lost against Miami. I think Miami, that does. So. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Taylor wasn't there, right? Taylor wasn't there, so they almost lost it. If it wasn't for Tua dropping that, that snap, who knows what would have happened. Cool. So that's for week 11. Oh, man. So hopefully the Jets can turn it around with this Bills game, but this is this is... This is it. This is it, Yams. This is it, me. They gotta, My they gotta do team something. And the Jets. We gotta get it together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that's gonna do it for this episode, guys. Thank you guys again for listening to the very end, and we'd love to see you guys giving your opinion with us on our social media, which is football underscore tailgaters on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Thank you guys again for listening, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. <laughs>